the name of Jesus Christ. I love gathering together with the body of Christ and celebrating Jesus. Jesus is truly all that we need. And Jesus is truly all that we give. We go in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's amazing to watch God work in this place week after week after week. God is with us. Now, I know you didn't get that extra hour of sleep last night. (laughs) But that is no excuse. For lack of excitement over Jesus. Amen? Amen. Never mind. (laughs) God is good. God is working in this place. It seems like every week we're celebrating something else that God is doing. People joining the church, people growing in their faith. Last week we celebrated our missions. And that God is increasing that beyond what we can imagine in this place. And you know, for over a year now, we have been involved in putting pudding cups into bags and ramen into bags and going to the store and buying items and packing them with the whole purpose of we want to get Jesus to our community. That's been the goal from day one. Was to use these bags, first of all, to show the love of Christ in a real tangible way, in a need that our community has to make sure children who don't get food get food, showing the love of Christ. But it was also to build relationships with the administrators, the principals, the counselors in these schools to build a bridge from the church to the school. And God, as we have seen, has opened doors along the way, allowing us as a church to go and serve these schools. So when the schools say, we need help, what's the first thing we want them to think of? Us. There's a church that loves. There's a church that serves. And so we've been able to have the, our teams go over there and serve with our t-shirts on. We've been able to have a table in some of these schools that has our information on to pass out and invite people to church from schools. Now, we all understand the state of education And our prayer is that we can get in a school with this and teach it and proclaim it. How big is our God? Do you think that's impossible? If anybody said yes, know what? You're wrong. This last week, Our leadership was able to have a meeting with the leadership of Bellhaven Elementary School. And in the fall, we're going to be starting a Bible club. (laughs) Where we can go in, open this up, openly share the hope of Jesus Christ. So the next time you go and buy ramen, which we do, we need more ramen. We're we're good. We're good good for right now. But Wednesday night, why do we do it? This is the reason to get the hope of Jesus out. And what? Who would have thought that one bag of food? Well, a bunch of bags of food. 
But it takes endurance. It takes consistency. It takes going out of these doors and connecting in our community in real tangible ways to say, I love you. Let me prove it. I'm going to give you something that you need and being concerned truly about lives. And now because Berean Baptist Church has done that, we have an incredible opportunity that God has given us. And this is just the beginning because we're never satisfied i'm never satisfied with a win and i hope you never are either that just makes me want another win and another win and we keep pushing and we keep moving forward until the name of jesus is in every place in this city every place in this world and today we're going to celebrate god and how big he is and what he is doing. And I am thankful for Tim for leading this initiative. And Miss Becky. How often I see him in that closet. And even this morning he had a cart that he was taking from that back table into the, into the closet of food. I'm thankful for you for bringing for loving, for sacrificing, for packing bags. And for Sean, where's he at? Is he up with the kids? He's up with the kids. For jumping right in and getting involved and be leading these Bible studies that are going to be coming up as he connects, trying to bridge that school now back into our church, bring in families and kids. This does not count for my preaching time, just so you know. <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there first. <laughs> Miss Aaron, would you mind standing? I know you're by yourself. I am thankful for Aaron uh, and Sean and Ella who have moved their family here to join and unite with us on helping reach the next generation. Can we give them a, her a round of applause? <laughs> they have moved here, left parents left family to come and unite and further the kingdom of God here at Berean Baptist Church. Better put this, this is like a weapon. It is a weapon, it's a sword I'm using. I got to be careful. I'm afraid I'm going to throw it at somebody. Be healed, no. Um, and so we want to bless them and show them in a real tangible way that we appreciate them and we thank them for sacrifice. It is a sacrifice to leave family to move an area where God has called you to, but it really is it a sacrifice. Tim and Becky have moved here. Tona and Dulce have moved here. We, she kind of came back. You've lived here before. But we came back <laughs> as God has moved, but it's not because we get to serve God. We get to be part of a greater, something greater than us. And so I want to be able to bless them. We're going to have in the, on that back table all month, we're going to be collecting gift cards for them. Gift cards to places like Walmart, Albertsons, Smith's, where they can buy groceries. Have you tried to buy groceries? As they set up a home, let's bless them and show love tangibly to them. So uh, starting next Sunday, if you guys, if God so leads and places it on your heart that you can just bring a gift card to them, we'll have a, a basket in the back just to say thank you. Thank you for coming to unite with our family. Thank you for helping us reach our city and our schools. God is moving in this place. So hang on, because there's so much more that God's got in store for us. Now the preaching can start. <laughs> James. James. Oh my goodness, what a book. God is so good. I love the passion of James, half-brother of Jesus, who missed out on Jesus until after the resurrection. And then with passion, as he realizes who Jesus was the whole time, on absolute fire for the church, wanting the church to know that faith is real and faith changes you. Faith changes you, and our actions should prove that he who lives in us has changed us, and we are different today than we were even of yesterday and the day before. 
because we are constantly growing in our walk and our knowledge of who God is. The idea we're seeing today is to remain. James is encouraging the church, the believers, as they're scattered, to remain. How exactly we're going to see. Look at James chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we are in awe of you this morning and you're working God, in our own lives, in this church, in this world, God, you are moving, you are active. God, you are working in ways that we cannot even comprehend, God, and we are so grateful for your mercy over us. God, we are so undeserving of your love, but God, your love is there. You have given us Jesus. You have given us your son. You have proved your love to us. God, thank you. Thank you for not leaving us in our sins. Thank you for not leaving us separated from you. Thank you for not leaving us your enemies as your enemies. But God, you have built a bridge of reconciliation. Help us, God, today to see you. God, in a greater way than we've ever seen you, seen you before. God, that your spirit would move in this place that you would break our hearts, break our hardness. God, open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to you and who you are. God, that we would leave today changed because of your word and your working. God, it's you. It's not us. It's not me. It's only you. God, we cling to you this morning. Pray that your will is done in this place. Oh God, you are so good. And God, we love you because you first loved us. We pray in the precious holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To remain. To remain is to continue to possess a particular quality or fulfill a particular role. James is writing to the church, the scattered believers, the early church, and telling them and reminding them to do two things that we're going to see this morning. The first is this, to remain in unity as the body of Christ. To remain in unity as the body of Christ. You'll see in the back of your bullets in the outline for this morning, and también para los que hablan español, tenemos los puntos en español. Es permanecer en la unidad del cuerpo de Cristo. That is the design of the body. The, de the body is designed to be together. It's hard to take a finger off. It's hard to remove a part of the body. The body is designed to be together and to work together. The body's not designed to lose a part. When you lose a part, the body goes crazy. And there's an adjustment period for the body because it's not as it was designed to be. Does anybody have a perfect body today? <laughs> Just beanie. <laughs> we have an imperfect body. The church today, I uh, know. I'm just going to shock you. It's not perfect. There is no perfect church. When you find the perfect church, don't do what? Don't join it. Why? Because you'll ruin it. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Nobody's better than anybody. Nobody is more important than anybody. The body has different functions, yes? I know this is probably not a new analogy for most of you because the Bible teaches this. There must be unity in the body. This broken body doesn't function perfectly because it is imperfect. It is still 
part of this world. I shared the story last week, right? Of my, how my imperfect body functions. My kidneys don't work great. My eyes don't work great. But you know what? I'm still thankful that I have eyes. The body of Christ is not perfect. There's going to be parts of the body that don't function right. But we're still thankful for every part because we need every part. And James, as he is writing, he is trying to say, we need you all. We need everybody. Everybody united together in purpose and in mission, united around Jesus Christ. And so he writes this because he wants unity in the church, unity amongst believers. The first verse that we looked at, James 1.16, it says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. We strive forward in unity as a body, and James is demonstrating in these few words how. James constantly comes back to this motivation of love. My beloved brethren, he loves them. He loves them as Jesus loved them. He cares for them. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but yet he loves them enough to take time to point them to truth. To keep them focused on where their focus is supposed to be. To not letting distractions and difficulties and body parts that aren't working right for, to stop them from moving on, moving forward in the mission of God. He wants what's best for them, not to be dissuaded or to be moved from the truth and the faith that saved them. He's practicing a principle in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 15, it says this, But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head. Who is the head of the body? Christ. Christ is the head of the body. Christ is the head of the church. What's the context of that principle in Ephesians 4, 15? It's unity. How do we know that? Because the Bible teaches it. Don't just take one verse and make it a doctrine. Use the context of the passage. So to understand where the speaking truth in love comes from, we go back to the beginning of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 verse 1 where it talks about what the church is. It says, Therefore I, a prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy. Prove your faith by your actions. To walk worthy of the calling you have received. Then he goes on to describe the life and how we are to live. It says in verse 2, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Those are easy to do, right? It's easy to be humble. It's easy to be gentle. It's easy to be patient. It's easy to bear together in love. Verse 3 says, making every effort. Don't stop. Don't stop being humble. Don't stop being gentle. Don't stop trying to be patient. Don't stop bearing together in love. Does your body ever let you down? No? It isn't perfect. The body will let you down. I'm going to tell you right now. 
or an imperfect church because we're imperfect people. I am an imperfect pastor. I'm an imperfect husband. I'm an imperfect father. We're going to let each other down. We're going to hurt each other from time to time. It just is what's going to happen. There's a phrase going around called church hurt. Hurt by the church. Has anybody been church hurt? Liars. Raise your hand. (laughs) Everybody's been hurt by the church. I've probably been hurt more by believers than I have by unbelievers. The body's imperfect, yet we continue to remain in unity with the body. Striving together in forgiveness, in gentleness, speaking the truth, in love. And that is exactly what James is doing here. As he writes, he says, listen, I don't want you guys to be deceived. I love you. You, We need to remain united. You may be doing things you're not supposed to. But we unite around Jesus Christ with forgiveness and with love. Speaking the truth in love. You cannot have just truth. And you cannot have just love. Truth in love together as we speak and as we live. Unity in the body, loving one another, forgiving one another, in all humility, knowing that we're all sinners. Man, I mess up too. Man, I make mistakes too. I'm not always patient. I'm not always gentle. I don't always bear in love. And people don't always do those things to me. But we don't use those as excuses to run and disconnect from the body. The body is designed to be together. Sometimes my kidneys hurt me. But I can't just rip them out and throw them away. I mean, I could, but then it'd be the end of me. We continue to remain connected to the body because it is God's design for us. Verse 4 of Ephesians 4. There is one body. Excuse me, let's go back to 3. Making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to one hope, which is Jesus, at your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. We see the functioning of the body of Christ in verse 11 of Ephesians 4. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to Equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The church, the body, entirely does the ministry. You can't just have a hand do it. You can't just have a foot do it. Have you ever tried to walk on one leg? A hop on one leg? It's difficult. When parts of the body don't function, when you can't see, it's hard to walk, right? It doesn't just take the feet to walk. You have to see where you're going. You need to hear so you can know if somebody's coming up on the side of you. It takes the entire body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. Verse 13, until until when? When do we stop? Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. So when do we stop this work? When you look like Jesus. We will, and just so you know, on this earth, you're not going to get there. So we continue and continue and continue 
until we are in the fullness of Christ. Then in verse 14, it says, then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every direction of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. This is exactly what James is writing. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren, he says. Again, in the context of church unity and spiritual maturity, Paul writes Ephesians 4, 15, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. We are to walk together, to live together, to remain united together in purpose and mission. That's why we take church membership so seriously, because you become a member of, of the church, a part of the body connected together that is not so easily removed. Don't be easily removed from the body. In April, I'm excited to announce that we're going to have some new groups that are going to be starting on Wednesday nights that's going to help you be connected to the body. On April 10th, we'll have three new groups that are going to be starting on Wednesday nights. One will be with Brother Forrest. It will be a men and women group. Men and women? Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Co-ed. Going through Galatians. Joanna will be leading one for the women, looking at the life of Abigail. And I'll be doing one looking at Titus. We have the sign-up sheets in the back, and we'd love for you to get connected as we grow together. love we remain in the body and it's more than just words that we're called to do this whole series is prove it is that faith is more than words right it's actions too and so for our action step for this one for number one is more than just speaking in truth and love it's living live in truth and love. Don't just display truth through your speech, but also through your actions, because actions speak louder than words. So we live in truth and love. We have action steps to put into practice. What am I going to do? It's not enough to gain knowledge about the Word in God. We have to apply it and make it practical. Paso de acción es esto. Vive en la verdad y el amor. Love the body as Jesus did. We remain in unity with the body, with the church, because it is not about us. If it was just about me, it'd be easy to say, okay, I got hurt, I'm leaving. I'm out. It's not about me. It's about Him and His mission. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy because he gave himself for the church. Take whatever part you want. Give yourself for the church, the body, serving the body, connected to the body, growing the body, helping the body, the body of Christ. Number two, he goes on. After speaking of this principle that was so expounded upon in Ephesians, it's beautiful the way that James and Ephesians work together. He says, remain in God. Number two, remain in God. Remain in unity with the body of Christ and then remain in God. Permanecer in Dios. He says, don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. Stay in God. Remember who He is and remember what He's done. Remember who God is and remember what God has done. He goes into verse 17. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above 
and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James encourages them to remain in God by remembering his good gifts, specifically gifts of light. He is the Father of lights. There's many names of God throughout, the, throughout his word, but this is probably my favorite. He's the Father of lights. And there's so much. We could take, how much time do you guys have? All day. Paul preached till midnight. And just expound on Father of lights. There's so much depth in how James is describing God. The Father connotates origin, good, perfection, originate from God. He is the originator of all good and perfect gifts. And the Father of light Thank you. You got me. Plural. Multiple lights. Multiple kinds of lights. Physical, spiritual. All light originates from God. Verse 17 ends saying, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning, he does not change. Don't worry. This is a gift that lasts forever. Light that lasts forever. The physical light. Anybody appreciate physical light? Yeah? Well, now you got one hour shifted to later in the day. And each day as they grow, it grows longer the light as we move into spring. Light is a gift physical light we can see to live physical life can thrive plants can grow we can work genesis 1 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters then god said let there be light and there was light and god saw the light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Physical life. He did not have to give us the gift of light, but he did. Remember. Praise God and thank God for light. Don't be deceived about who God is and what he has done. Don't be deceived about the magnitude and the size of God. Don't let this world and its words diminish God. Verse 16 is probably my favorite of Genesis 1. I have a lot of favorites this morning. Mainly because of those last words. And pondering on the magnitude and the size of our God. Have you ever looked up in the sky at night and just wonder in awe of our God? I wish I could take us all to the Creation Museum right now. Has anybody ever been to the Creation Museum? Let's go on a field trip. (laughs) We got plans tomorrow? Let's just go together. They sit you in this kind of like a planetarium type thing. And you sit back and they put the sky above you. And then they slowly move out and move out and move out. And it's unbelievable when you look at the stars and you look at the galaxies upon galaxies that are out there. And they throw it in a little, you think that a couple more verses on that maybe, right? <laughs> he made the stars also. Now, I can't get us to the Creation Museum fast enough. So we're going to watch a very short, brief video. Just, I want, I've, I'm a visual person. i got to see it. Let me see it. And we're going to see two parts in this short video. 
One that shows the magnitude of stars. And the other, we're going to take a very quick trip through our universe via drone. We've got to buy a drone like this. All right, if we can play that video, please.